Thank you for this opportunity to vote to Kyle and to Art. Um, 27 years ago, my next door neighbor, Linda Perazzo, called and said, what are you doing? I said, nothing. She said, would you like a job at town, called, town Hall? I said, no. And she said, well, I need someone to open mail. I said, no. And she said, come just do it for six weeks, please. I said, OK. So I went. 15 years later, I left that department as the assistant treasurer to take a position with Mary Ann Clark, Mary Ann Smith as the assistant clerk. I've been there for 10 years. I've been doing that job for 10 years. I know every aspect of that job. Mary Ann's retirement came up very quickly. I was retiring in July. Mary Ann's retirement came up very quickly. The next coming months between now and November is going to be a very tight schedule for someone who knows the job to get the town through the elections without serious fines and violations for late, for late filings and things that are easily missed in an office when you don't know what you're doing. And that's why I'm running for a town clerk. OK, thank you. Um, so Arthur Boyle talked about modernizing in mm -hmm. his opening statement. Mm -hmm. um, how, would it, how would you go about that? My job as the assistant to the town clerk is to support the town clerk in the things that she sets for the office. Um, Pat is, who sits out here today, Pat is also an assistant town clerk with me. She was the assistant collector. She set up the payment system in that department and she is in the process of setting that up now. The reason it was not done is because that was not what Mrs. Smith wanted. I don't overrule Mrs. Smith. I don't set policy for that office. Um, she never felt comfortable with it. I feel more comfortable with it, and it's being put into place now. And would you have anything to add on the subject, Mr. Arthur Boyle? Well, it's been 10 years um, in the making, and uh, we're still doing things like we did 30 years ago. I believe that you have to have somebody who can take the initiative. Um, I taught state and local government at Quincy College. I, um, I taught economics at Quincy College. Uh, I understand the process of running an office. I, I am the uh, uh, health agent and the inspectional services division manager for the town of Holbrook. And um, I know how to get things done. Okay. Thank you. Um, now I would like to turn it over to the audience to ask, for the audience to ask questions. So does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can agree that the town clerk's job is detailed and complex. If you win this election, Mr. Boyle, how do you intend to fill the huge void of knowledge Ms. Struzik's retirement will leave? Well, there's obviously some knowledge that goes out the door. Uh, with Peg, I would hope that she would stay. Um, that would be the ideal situation. But you, you, you're looking at 10 years ago when Marian Smith came in. She came in with no experience, and her uh, slogan was, uh, "The state is only a phone call away." Um, I think I know most of the uh, functions of the job. Uh, I I can make the phone call to the state if I get into a pinch. I've got friends that are uh, town clerks in other uh, towns, and uh, I work with one in Holbrook every day. Um, so I, I don't think it's a, an issue. I mean, we're not running NASA. It's uh, you know, it, it's a clerical office and a record-keeping office. It's it, it's um, you know, not that complicated. Do I get to respond to that? Um, yeah, you can respond to that. It was it's a misnomer that Mrs. Smith came into that office by herself. Mrs. Smith came in with some, she had been a uh, registrar, she had not some knowledge of the census, she had a skeleton knowledge of 
the end of the election process because she worked the polls. But Maureen Robinson, who sits back there, was the assistant, assistant clerk. She trained Mrs. Smith. And there was also another um, senior clerk in there, Jean. Jean helped train Mrs. Smith. And then after Maureen retired, Jean was still there to help train me. Mrs. Smith did not learn the clerk's office by picking up a phone and calling state elections. Is there any more questions? Yes? Arthur, you have referred to the fact that you talk town government. That's kind of a broad brush of the, the I'm sorry, sweep of the brush. Could you tell me in detail, did it cover all of the town departments or did it just focus on a few so that they gave you the daily knowledge of running the town's clerk's office? You used that as your campaign statement. I've asked this question on several sites and haven't gotten a reply. And I would just like to know what exactly was the syllabus in that course regarding the town clerk? Well, let me answer the second question first as far as the answers on uh, Facebook and that kind of thing. Um, I don't do a lot of uh, social media because um, you know, I've, I've actually been treated very badly uh, by the campaign of my opponent, uh, and it, it's been a, uh, a, a lousy experience, if I have to use a phrase. But um, in answer to your first question, um, it was a um, course that taught you about um, the inner workings of government, the um, uh, you know, it taught you uh, what county government was about, it taught you what state government was about, it taught you what local government was about, and that included things like the census and, um, you know, birth records and death records and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, I have some, uh, some knowledge of it, some working knowledge of it. I guess what I want to ask you, though, is if it's a course on town government, how much time was actually executed on those topics? Because you had to cover, I would assume, all the departments, from the selectmen to the firemen to the policemen. I want to know how in depth. Well, you didn't do fire and police necessarily because they were considered public safety. You would get involved in the selectmen, the uh, planning board, the um, town manager versus the uh, town administrator argument. And um, you would, uh, you know, get into it in, in some detail, not to the point that you're training somebody for a, uh, you know, a position in town hall, but you're giving them a, um, you know, an intense overview of, um, you know, what goes on in local government. Last question, I promise this will be the last. That's all right. Um, since you have stopped teaching, are you aware of any laws that have changed in the election process? Since I've stopped teaching, I, ha I actually haven't stopped teaching. I taken uh, some time because we have a big project going on in Holbrook so I've been tied up um, you know more than usual. Okay so then but are you aware of the new uh, any election laws that have been changed in the past 10 years? Not off the top of my head I, I wouldn't um, uh, name you any. Thank you. Um, excuse me. Why haven't you detailed any plans for the office? Why haven't I detailed any plans for the office? Our office is so streamlined. We have got applauded by the selectmen for everything we do. We have we don't have a problem in the office. Absentee ballots come in, they're entered and they're done ready to be shipped out before the ballots even come in. I've set up a process where the seniors can just send me a note, send me a letter, they can send me an email. They get back a form, they send me the form, I send them a ballot for every single election. Um, it, there is nothing to improve in there. As things go along, I mean the state gives us things, every year the state dumps something on the elections, it's a surprise, we work it out, we manage it, Marianne knows Mary and I, Ann and I both know each other's full jobs. If Mary Ann is in the middle of a project and she walks away, I can pick it up and I can finish it. And that's how we work. We work hand in hand. Everything in that office is covered. It'll be very hard 
And the biggest chore I'm going to have if I get elected is to find another assistant clerk because one person, even with 10 years knowledge, cannot do that job, not effectively. There's nothing to improve? I didn't say there was nothing to improve. I said right now, right now with the two of us working hand in hand, we have that office down the way it's supposed to be. What's going, going, how do we improve that office? The way we improve the office is with online payments, and which I've already stated, that was not mine to do. I had no authority to make any structural improvements to that office. That was not my job. My job was to have the back of the town clerk. Okay, Ms. Lombard. Hi. I'm Maureen Robinson. I worked for 12 years in that office. And, uh, and I trained Mary Ann Smith. And let me tell you that um, I still work in a town clerk's office. There are many changes that have gone on in the last 10 years. Um, one of the things that you're speaking about online payments, I brought that up 10 years ago before I left. And I was told by the uh, town administrator that it was impossible because that would involve more work for the um, collector's office. Uh, so that was uh, shut down. Um, the uh, other thing that we always had a problem with, and I'm sure they still do, is getting up-to-date computers. We only had, um, we each had a state computer but we only had two computers that we could actually go on to um, for births, deaths, marriages, things like that. We have, we have one now. We have one, one computer. If you want to do a birth, death, and marriage, that, that is not a problem. you sit at Marianne's office. You sit at Marianne's desk. So it's not licensed. We, is, we have no money. Yes, we yes, have yes, no money. money. And you go, you go and ask for money, and they say no, they don't have it. The last the, now we are the keeper of the, so our we, office. We need to change this office. Our we office. We need to change the office. We need to change uh, to get people to back people up. When they say they need a new computer, they say, okay, get the new computer. They don't have a problem over the collect treasury no, office. They, don't. they never did. They always could get new computers. We are the keeper. We, we are the, our office is the keeper of records. Every other office has a copy machine that is probably can turn into an airplane. The last printer we received, which was three months ago, came from Amazon.com, $200, and didn't come with a manual. That's the budgeting process for the clerk's office. It's just not there. Well, it's time we change the way the clerk's office does business and uh, get computers into the office and you know there were grant programs uh, I just did one uh, $46,000 to the uh, towns of Holbrook, uh, Randolph and uh, Avon and um, that brings uh, you know money into the system that isn't normally there and isn't part of the uh, budget I think it would make Steve proud to um, have somebody uh, that does um, you know, researches grants and looks for other ways of raising money and uh, getting services uh, online. I'll talk to the selectmen about getting a bigger copy machine. Yeah, I saw a hand in the back. In the oh, I was just trying to stop. I thought there was a question. Okay, okay. Then you. If that's what you want to do, then you need to change the office. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. He actually has been responsible for a number of grants that have come in, and he's done a, a fairly good job. Um, he's not perfect, but um, he's done some great work on the ponds, as an example. Um, you know the um, uh, treatment. I think what I'm asking is if our equipment in town hall is so, for lack of a better word, antiquated. Why isn't the administrator in the present selectmen making sure that we have better equipment to initiate? The better question is why isn't the department head? Uh, it's up to the department head. It's not the department head. It's up to the department head. I am not the department head. change the department head. I am not the department head. That seems to be the problem. I am not the department head. 
I have been asking for a new copy machine for many years. What happens at the end of every year during the budgeting process? The town accountant comes in and says, we need extra cash. We need it. And they take, they take the money, put it back into the general budget. Mr. Boyle, a couple of things here. Number one, uh, if you were going and getting these grants from the other towns um, as a selectman, why weren't you at least asking uh, Mr. Thorne to get those same grants that uh, probably we need? Number two, um, you know, you pick, one of your big campaign things is to have Saturday hours. Um, that's uh, the, the, my understanding is that one time Marion asked for it. And the board of selectmen told her that there was enough money. And secondly, if you think it's so important that we have these hours for people, why did you change the hours for the town hall to be open from seven to nine when people who worked in Boston had a better chance of being here to five to seven when most of them can't make it there? Well, I don't know if I didn't vote for the um, change in hours uh, that presently exists. I was shop steward, my name is Janet Fenger, I was shop steward for the clerical union for the six years, mm -hmm. and we approached the town to be open um, on Saturdays for the public. Mm -hmm. We were told because of union contracts, our overtime would have to be paid or hours have to be cut from the staffing in town hall and the one girl offices at a shortage, two girl offices at a shortage that one would have to pick up the other one's job, which everyone that does get cross trained. Another thing he said, we would have to pay custodians to be there on Saturday, and we'd have to pay staffing to be there on Saturday. And in fact, all those things would have to be negotiated in contract. I said, let's do it then. And they said, absolutely not. We will not accept that. The, um, the minutes of meetings don't back that up. The question is, you're saying you want to have Saturday hours. What's changed? Yeah. What's changed is that we need to to adjust for the commuters. Uh, we could have negotiated with the union for just like job sharing that you have the particular instance in your office right now. We did try to negotiate that into our contract when I was shop steward, and it was turned down. Well, the, the minutes of the meeting don't back that up. Uh, the minutes of the meetings don't back that up. Meetings of what minutes? The select, what, the negotiation the, minutes? The selectmen's uh, no, records. This went into negotiations. It's not in, it wasn't in the executive session in negotiations. It was at a negotiating meeting with the selectmen and with Ed for one, and we were told no outright. Well, I've talked to probably um, three of the selectmen directly about it and the town administrator, and none of them have any memory of uh, that, so. <laughs> That's not, That's nothing new. Yes? Hi, Pam. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the new equipment to I do the online services. I know you've already done a lot to register people for voting, but are you going to, quote unquote, bring us up to the next century? When I'm town clerk, I will sit with the town manager, not with the town manager, with the town accountant, and we, we will work the budget out. I can't say, give me $10,000 for a copy machine, and $10,000 for a copy machine comes in next week. You tell them what you need, they give you what's in your budget, what's budgeted for you. You do the best you can with that budget. If they don't budget, for a new copy machine, I'm not going to get a new copy machine. I have a question about um, early voting. Um, how is that going to be changing or is that going to be maintained? How is that going to be discussions for both parties? I understand that it's going to be maintained, that they, they were so successful with it in the past that they're going to continue it. And how much um, extra work does that entail? Okay. Can you answer anything like that? Sure. Early voting is a logistical nightmare. If you walk into any of the, if you walk into precinct two and four now, because there's two precincts, uh, usually once during every election, someone will come in and two and think they can walk around and go on at four. Well, you can't lose a ballot. You can't lose a ballot. Um, so what happens during early voting, because our office is so small, 
we have to set up a temporary polling place over in the advisory room. That takes two people. It takes a ballot. It's two people for up to three weeks full time. It takes a ballot box, and you've got everybody in there walking around with their ballots. You have to make sure nobody leaves that room with a ballot. We know in the morning how many ballots we give those girls. We add up. We know by the end of the day, if they take 50, and then they come and get another 50 and another 50, we know how many ballots they have. At the end of the day, we have to get back the same ballots, either in an envelope or it's still un unmarked. Um, if somebody walks off with a ballot, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. It's a logistical nightmare. And if you think that you're going to go in there, Anyone thinks, anybody thinks that they're going to go in there in May, and when we have a state primary in September, you're going to know what you're doing. It's wrong. You're wrong. You have, nobody has any idea unless they've worked in there. They work up to an election. It's just, it takes years to learn. It takes, a, it takes two people both knowing what they're doing so that when you make the mistake, and you will make a mistake, the other person says, wait a minute, that's a mistake. We need to, you know, then that's how you need, need two people doing it. And one of them has to have a lot of experience. Any more questions from the audience? Okay, I just, I have one question, and it was about the voting. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just wondering, since it's such a convoluted system, how would both of you, I feel like there should be some sort of change to how it would run, because the way you just explained it was so convoluted that I feel like there should be a change. Is there any way you could change it? If the only way you could, no, you can't change early voting. Early voting is mandated by the state. Everything we do, everything we do, starting the election to the end of the election when the election is certified is mandated state steps. You have to start here and you have to end here and you have to know everything in between. You miss something, the town's going to get sued. Okay. And um, surrounding like this the Saturday hours, how are you going to push to implement that, Arthur Boyle? Well, I think you've got to first negotiate it with the, um, the uh, clerical union. And um, I think if you're creating a um, situation where you're open 9 to 1 to, to, uh, to uh, Saturdays a month, as an example, I think it's a place to start. Um, you can negotiate that with the um, the clerical you know you can come to a side letter agreement that kind of thing um, because it, it is important to address the, um, the the people who can't get to town hall uh, on a regular basis you know that they need to take a half a day or a day off from work and that's problematic I mean you um, you have to address the, the real problems and that's one of the real problems Uh, it would be, it would cost the town even more money to 
<laughs> well, the custodial staff is grown since you had left uh, town hall. I said the uh, the uh, custodial uh, help has changed since you left uh, town hall, and I think you could um, arrange somebody's hours to be Tuesday through Saturday rather than Monday through Friday. Yes, and you have to be negotiated to their contract. Yeah, that's right, yeah. but it. It won't happen if you don't try to do it. I so I mean, there's a there's a great Chinese proverb that goes something like, "You'll fail 100 percent of the times that you don't try." When you approach it, there is you know, absolutely no matter what. I tried the two different contracts. It's kind of hard to believe that the selectman was at the whichever selectman at that time was at those negotiations with it, so on, forgot about the two different contexts that we tried to get. Well, all I can tell you is it doesn't appear anywhere in the records. I went back to, I went back 11 years. They went to at, in, at negotiations. I'm not saying selections meetings, I'm saying negotiations. Completely different animal. Well, you could, you know, commit anything to memory that's, um, you know, not written down anywhere. Miss in the back first. I'd like to ask um, Mr. Boyle, how many uh, town halls do you know that are open on Saturday? I don't know of any that have Saturday hours off the top of my head. I will, you know. Uh, um, and but they manage to, to survive. It, 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 doesn't, to it doesn't mean we can't do it. 28,000 people in it. They don't work Saturday. We can't do it. They yeah, work till, uh, excuse me, I'm talking. Uh, they, yeah. work, they work one night until uh, 8 o'clock at night. And uh, that's when all the people come in that work late. Well, I don't know about that, but. Uh, well, I just think the town of us, us even needs to be open on Saturday. And to change everything around, get the union, you know, all involved, and then they got to work Saturdays or mm -hmm. take a day off during the week. I tell you, if I was in that union, I wouldn't go for it. <laughs> but good luck to you. Well. But if you don't, the, you know, City Hall in Boston is not open on Saturday. If you don't take the initiative, you're never going to accomplish well, anything. You don't need it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, it is broken, so. Okay, and then this is the last question. So I understand that we're we're anticipating online transactions for the town clerk's office to come July. Is that right? Is that the ETA for it? Probably not July. There's too much work to do before this. It's going to be later than July? No, I said I said as soon as we can get it online. I will not make a campaign promise I cannot keep. Okay. But when we compare to other towns like Marshfield, for example, they do offer online services. What what has been the delay in that? Where, where Bob, for the third time, the Bob, the third time, the city town clerk did not feel comfortable with it. My job was not to say, well, I am comfortable with it, so I'm going to put it into practice. No, My not, job not, was to say, I will not, support you I'm in whatever asking, you want I'm me to do. Why didn't you do it? I'm saying, as a department, what, what has been the delay in terms of the culture, getting that infrastructure in place? The, the delay is that the town... They said no. The delay is that the town clerk is not comfortable with it. How many times do you want me to say it? it's the town clerk's decision? And she never felt comfortable with it. It just got put into the collector's office how long ago, Pat? Five years ago? When did it go into the collector's office? Five years ago? Five years ago. So Miriam was halfway through her term. And it was not something she was comfortable with. Do you feel comfortable with it? Yes, I do. But you're not willing to commit an ETA for all. I'm not. No, because I, no, because I've got I have three elections, look three different elections looking at me. You, there's enough work in there for three people. We've got two people in that office. There's enough work in there for three people. Thank so I'm not going to promise that it's going to be done July first. Yeah, just one last question. One more question, if we could. Yeah. Um, thank you, and, and both of you, thank you for your service to the town. Um, as a member of the school committee, I'm, I'm sitting here listening 
And I, I'm a little bit disturbed with some of the attitude of the audience, and I get it. I'm, I understand politics and all that stuff, but my concern, um, Peg, if you would mind, if I ask, if by chance you don't win, mm -hmm. there's a chance I have, would you stay on to train your replacement? You're talking about the amount of this work that happens. I'm thinking for the benefit of the community as a school committee member. And Mr. Boyle was back, I was back, you know, selectman, you know, if, if you lose, he steps into that job. Mm -hmm. If you walk away, like you're saying, there's no one with experience. That's for the benefit of the town, do you stay on? Or do you I'm set, to, I'm set to retire on July 1st. I was retiring on July 1st until Miriam decided to leave. So I just want to clap, so that's kind of a no. If, if you lose, I'm you walk out. I'm set, I'm set to retire on July 1st, yes. Okay, then thank you. I, again, thank you for your service. I thank Arthur for his. Mm -hmm. But as a member of the school committee, um, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned, too. I'm concerned, too. This. Well, Marianne is committed to um, stay for a brief period of time, and um, that gives me some comfort uh, as well. Great. Thank you. Thank both of you. Um, how long has Marianne committed to stay for? Marianne told, well, I'd let, I'll let Marianne answer that. The best, the best, best of my knowledge, she's out the door on the 29th of the month. Okay. She has one week after. I will stay and help her, you know. She wants to certify the election. She's going to stay to certify the election. Okay. Um, I would like to go to closing remarks. So let's start with Arthur, Arthur Boyle. Well, I appreciate the audience's attention and uh, the uh, good work of PTN for putting this together. Um, I enjoy the uh, work as a member of the Board of Selectmen uh, coming into the uh, position of town clerk would give me an opportunity to work in a more hands-on um, fashion and I would be delighted to serve uh, the town in that capacity. It's uh, an interesting position, no doubt, but it's also being made out to be more complicated than it actually is, in my opinion. Um, I don't think um, we need to um, relive the uh, high highlights of the um, debate, but um, we just uh, will have to say we agree to disagree on um, on our, our issues and um, I, you know I'm not willing to accept we can't do it or it won't happen because the union won't let it or the uh, employees won't work the hours uh, I think if you give people the opportunity to do the right thing they'll do it so uh, with that I thank you and um, have a pleasant evening yeah, I'm going to use Mr. Bastianelli is he still here I'm going to use Mr. Bastianelli for an example. Mr. Bastianelli has been working in the town of Pembroke for, and a presence in the town of Pembroke and Town Hall for many years now. If Mr. Bastianelli were to win the selectman seat, Mr. Bastianelli would go onto that board with the other men, and he would sit for a year, and he would watch how that board worked, learn how that board worked, learn the inner workings of the town, before they let him do anything. He would sit for one full year. The second year he was there, I would think the next step is a clerk. Maybe he'd be the clerk. The third year, maybe the secretary. The fourth year, maybe the head of the Board of Selectmen. You're not going to vote a Board of Selectmen and he goes right to the head because he knows nothing about it. You don't vote someone who knows nothing about a job into a job unless you are willing to take the, the town is willing to take the responsibility, the penalties, and the fines that that person, the mistakes that person is going to make. And if you think you're going to go in that job and not make mistakes, that's the biggest mistake. You need to know what you don't know. Thank you very much, and I would appreciate your vote, vote for experience, vote for integrity on April 12th. May 12th. Thank you. Thank you everyone for showing up. Um, and thank you for the town, the town clerk candidates.